Now, time for us to uh, turn our attention back to rugby. Neil's done a tight five for us. Uh, Neil, take it away. Right, so Heineken Champions Cup back back this weekend. Two games on off the ball this Sunday, actually, before we get into it. We're going to have first of those. Nathan Murphy and James Downey will be live for Racing 92 against Connacht, 3.15 Irish time on Sunday. And then I'll be down in Thoman Park uh, with Keith Wood for Munster against Harlequins. Um, opening round of the opening round of the competition, it's going to be really, really interesting just to see how the new format affects the approach of teams. Because so much of this is going to be outside of teams' hands. We've got two pools of two pools of 12 teams, only the top four from each are going to be going through to the quarterfinals of the competition. So if you're talking you're each to each side playing four matches, an enormous amount is going to be outside of teams' hands. You could realistically win three or four games and just by virtue of the fact that you miss out on a couple of winning bonus points or maybe you didn't pick up a losing bonus point in that one game you lost, you could potentially be playing Challenge Cup Rugby in the quarterfinals as opposed to... Uh, Champions Cup rugby for the quarterfinals so I am starting to wonder and I put it to a couple of coaches last week when we were doing our kind of pre-tournament interviews and some of them they, they were they were kind of half agreeing with the idea that I think we could be seeing a lot more attacking rugby I think we could be seeing a lot more teams turning down the easy three points in favour of maybe going for a scrum 10 metres from the line or putting it down into the corner to go for a try because bonus points are going to be absolutely massive I think once teams get that little element of a foot on the throat, they're going to absolutely go for it and try ram home the advantage and put up as many points as possible. It might end up that we're in a situation where we actually see less competitive games because there could be a couple of hammerings once teams actually get into the driving seat that they really, really go for it. It's really difficult to call what way it's going to go. I'm actually just curious to see how it will develop. OK, I mean, it'd be great if the game actually responded to the allegations that it's become boring, particularly over the uh, the England team and their use of the glittering array of talent that they have. And actually, the club game became something that we could watch with excitement. The caveat to that, though, the caveat to that, though, is if you want teams to be attacking more, you are completely opening yourself to a lot more hammerings. Yeah, OK. Um, so that's talking about the importance of a fast start. You could end up in the wrong competition accidentally uh, by virtue of you not actually uh, getting off to a, a fast start. And also, if you do get off to a fast start, it might kill the ambition of some of the other teams, so you could be giving yourself an easy enough route to quarterfinals. Yeah, th that's kind of why it's, it's actually just really tough to call it and why we're, I'm just so curious to see how things develop over the first few weeks because it's a criticism the competition always would have had that maybe after a team has lost the opening game, opening game and didn't quite get the, the bonus point they needed in round two, that... Premiership teams and French teams in particular have been criticised of basically throwing in the towel after that and putting out the, the second string teams. Now, because we're playing even fewer games this time around, that's going to really hammer on the importance of actually getting a win in the opening game. I'm just going to take Munster as an example. So if Munster were to win this weekend, so home win against Harlequins, and I imagine that if they're getting that win, they're going to be absolutely desperate to get a bonus point win as well. All of a sudden, they're in a great position. Harlequins, they have a defeat. Realistically, are they going to be getting through to the uh, to the quarterfinals? They might not be. By the time Munster travel to Harlequins to the stoop in round four, Harlequins could be, could, could be putting out a second string team. Alternatively as well, should Munster lose against Harlequins this week, and bear in mind Harlequins have won at Thoman Park in European competition before, Munster are into a situation where they're going away to Claremont next week and you're pretty much assuming that they will have to win and probably get a, a pick up further bonus points along the way as well. So we could see teams actually just throwing in the towel a little bit earlier, absolutely hammering home the importance of getting off to a good start. That's um, cutthroat from the get-go. So when is that game and uh, how can people access it? The Munster Harlequins game? Yeah. Uh, half past five kick off this Saturday on, or this Sunday on Off the Ball myself and Keith Wood commentary from Thomas Park alright looking forward to that so how many of Munster's young players are going to be involved this could be this is the this is the battle for Munster's soul which of the coaching tickets has won the battle yeah I'm really curious to see this like probably a, I think we've seen a load of these young players over the last few weeks and to be honest they've played brilliantly we're probably only going to see some of them I would say Craig Casey Ben Healy involved possibly off the bench if we're looking through the team, probably James Cronin, one of Reese Marshall or Kevin O'Byrne, 
John Ryan, Stephen Archer, Ty Byrne, John Klein in the second row, possibly Finney and Witcherly in the second row or in the back row, a bit versatile in, in that area. Shane Daly, I imagine, is probably going to come in as well. Um, they don't seem to have too many uh, injuries out of the ordinary. All the guys coming back from Irish shoot, he seemed to be doing all right. But I just wanted to talk about the young players at Munster this season because they've, they've been in this period where they did lose a lot of players to Irish duty over the last four, five, six weeks. And it seems like, you know, they've they've won every game. They're seven out of seven in the Pro 14. We were kind of talking about the production line only a couple of months ago when they lost against Leinster. Um, it's a it, it does feel like a very promising to, uh, promising time to be a Munster fan at the moment because they have a rake of young players coming through who are either towards the, the tail end stages of academy or in the early stages of their professional careers, like Finney and Witcherly, his younger brother Josh, uh, as we've already mentioned, heaps this season, Craig Casey and Ben Healy have looked fantastic. There are a host of back row players coming through, Jack O'Sullivan, Gavin Coombs, uh, John Hodness, Thomas Ahern in the second row is an absolutely enormous beanpole of a player. There are a lot of guys that are coming through there and I would say... If in five, six years, Munster have picked up silverware and Munster are, are, are back eating at that top table again, I think we would be looking back on this period, this kind of start to the 2020-21 season, as being the proper formative period for this group of players. They might not go on and do it, but if they do, I think this will be, this little block of games, this opening kind of quarter of the season, will be the, the time that they will have formed together as a team. When do we get to see Ben Healy start? I think he's getting close to a stage where he's he's almost 50-50 with JJ Hanner at the moment if we're talking on form. I think for I think just about uh, I think just about Hanrahan is probably getting the nod this weekend. But the speculation now around Healy, it probably does put a little bit of pressure on Van Gran that, you know, he has to he has to keep him involved. And also as well, the more he keeps him involved, that probably means the the price of his contract next season is going up. Yeah, week on week. There's probably an element with the Glasgow thing. You know, there's probably a bit of agent kite flying going on here. Uh, I think most people would say that he has a, a very strong chance within a couple of years of being Munster's first choice out half. And when you consider there is no absolute successor to Johnny Sexton, there's a gap in the market there that if someone who has the ambition wants to go for it, it's yeah. there to be taken. So. A lot of people would say it might be a short-sighted move if he was to leave Munster at the end of the season, but, you know, uh, they have a decision to make. And stranger things have happened. A 21-year-old yep. suddenly gets offered the opportunity to treble his money for a couple of years with no real risk. You know, maybe at the end of it you become the Scottish out-half, but unlikely you can always come back at that point as um, the prodigal son whose reputation will only be enhanced by the fact that everybody isn't watching you every week. So um, that's how that's going to work. What is the Jerry Flannery factor going to be like this week? Uh, yeah, curious to see that. Obviously, just knows Munster so well, knows a lot of those players, and you would imagine uh, knows a lot of the systems that they would have used. You know, knows the strengths and weaknesses of a lot of those players as well. Um, probably disappointing from his part that you know it's going to be an empty Thoman Park, and you would imagine he would have been getting quite a nice reception, a la, a la um, you know, Ron Nogara, Simon Ziva, Donna Ryan over the last few years when they've been back at Thoman Park very disappointed that, that that's not going to happen but he's someone who would have been highly regarded at Munster obviously took a year out and took his time you knew that there were going to be suitors for him when he left Munster and has probably picked his job I would imagine like because I imagine there were options there for him um, and there's there's a lot to like about Harlequins lots to like about the way they play um, and I'm just going to be curious to see how how that set piece functions and leading into the last little point in this tight five as well Specifically, I'm curious how the Leinster set piece functions, more so because they just have a bulk of Irish players involved there. And we would have seen over the course of the last month or two the struggles the Irish set piece had, particularly the line out. Uh, the scrum had issues, but probably not to the extent the line out definitely had them. And there are just so many of those similar players there. I'm eager to see how it gets on against Montpellier. Uh, to get a read of, are we talking a player's issue? Like, I mean, if Ronan Keller is throwing the ball absolutely fantastic over the next while, mm. you're starting to ask questions about what's happening in Irish camp and what are the rest of the players doing there and the calls and the way they are kind of being coached together. So if the Leinster lineout is an absolute mess over the next few weeks, it probably answers a lot of questions. If the Leinster lineout is fantastic over the next few weeks, it probably raises even more. All right, that's this week's Type 5. Good stuff, Neil. OTBAM live in association with Gillette. Good morning. Start with Gillette, giving you the confidence to tackle the day ahead. What is it?
uh, nearly 10 minutes past nine. Still plenty to come on the show this morning here on OTB AM.